What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about good and bad nominations for Wayfair. If you're looking for something to nominate as a Pokestop in your area, today we're gonna to be talking about what you should go ahead and nominate and what you shouldn't. A couple things before we start. First of all, this is an America-based video. So things in you know Europe and other countries might not go through even though I say they should go through in this video as what gets accepted in America is a lot different than what gets accepted in Europe. Also, don't take whatever I say in this video for complete science. Of course, there are different rules rules and everything is a case by case scenario and what will get accepted and what will not. If I do say something is a great nomination and it does end up not going through, I want you guys to think about how you're nominated. Most of the time people actually get their stuff declined because they have a bad title, a bad description. They took a bad picture or have a bad supporting photo and bad supporting information of a Pokestop. If you want to learn on how to put a good title, good description, take a good photo, a link below a video on how to nominate Pokestops. In there I talk about everything there is to know about how to nominate Pokestops. So if you haven't seen that video, I definitely recommend checking that out before you go through this video, but let's get into it. Good, bad, and then some gray area nominations in Wayfair. Timestamps below, let's talk about it. First thing I wanna talk about is some bad nominations so you guys can get your head around what to avoid nominating and what most likely will get declined as a Pokestop if you're trying to nominate. I quickly wanna note, you do have to be level 38 plus to nominate. So if you're not level 38 plus, you can watch this video, get your head around things, but you can't actually nominate anything. First of all, apartment slash neighborhood signs. Pretty much any street sign or, you know, apartment sign or neighborhood sign, like, you know, the green Greenville Apartments, Greenville Neighborhood. Those are just generic signs. They will not get accepted in majority of cases. The only time they will get accepted is if they're artistic or like, you know, they look really cool and they can be kind of marked as an artistic sign instead of an actual neighborhood sign. On the topic of generic things, generic mailboxes, man. If you have a mailbox, I don't care if it's your mailbox, I don't care whose mailbox it is, a generic mailbox will not get accepted. Even if it's a Canada Post mailbox, it will most likely get declined. It's just too generic. Also, let's talk about generic business. Businesses. Guys, any generic store, so like Walmart, you know, um, Target, any generic store, even generic like local stores, like a generic pub, a generic bakery, any generic store is going to get declined if you want to get a, a business accepted. I'm gonna talk about this later, but it needs to be a local hotspot and you need to be able to prove it's a local hotspot with supporting links and all of that stuff. So anything business related, unless it's a very local hotspot and you can prove that it's a, it deserves a Pokestop, it's an amazing treasure of your local area, it will get declined, guys. Businesses are hard to get through. We're gonna talk about that later. Also, I just wanna note, any sponsored store by Niantic, do not nominate it. So Starbucks, Verizon, any company that has a uh, sponsorship with Niantic, don't nominate those things because Niantic handles those differently. Okay, let's talk about private property. So guys, if you're nominating anything, no matter if it's a good thing to nominate or at all, if it's on private residential property, even if it's historical private residential property, it will get declined. So I don't care if you nominate a play structure in your backyard, it will get declined. If you guys are confused what private residential property means, the best way to think about it, in my opinion, is if there is a lawn. If someone has a lawn on their property and if you go on that lawn, you're trespassing, that's private residential property. That's why nominating things at apartments, like apartment amenities, and I'll talk about this later, is all right to nominate since no one owns that lawn other than the apartment itself. But if you go in someone's house or in front of someone's house and nominate something on that, it's going to get declined. So don't even waste your time with it. You're just wasting reviewers' times and you're also wasting your time and resources if you nominate anything on private residential property. Also anything on private farmland as well. That's pretty much the same thing. Someone owns that farm. You're trespassing if you go on that farmland. Don't nominate anything on farmland. And then finally, anything on K-12 school grounds. You might be confused what that means, but pretty much preschools, private, elementary, secondary, and high school, child care, day cares, rehabilitation centers, and safety shelters will get declined. I just want to clarify what exactly is a K-12 school and why colleges and universities and things on college and university grounds are fine to nominate compared to K-12 schools. K-12 schools are generally focused on children under the age of 18 and that's when it should be rejected. So pretty much elementary schools, high schools, private elementary schools, not even if it's owned by the city, even if it's owned by church and it's not affiliated with the city, they should be rejected. Anything on school ground in which that school is focused on children under the age of 18, so like daycares too, should be rejected. Nothing on K-12 school grounds. Now let's talk about emergency services. So anything that's obstructing emergency services will get declined. For example, fire stations, police stations, hospitals,
hospitals, military bases, specifically military bases, don't nominate anything on military bases, industrial sites, power plants, air traffic control towers, animal hospitals, pretty much anything that can obstruct, you know, if there's a lot of people around that poke stop and there's a issue in real life, you don't want to obstruct that area. So that's why getting a fire hydrant, for example, is really hard to get through. The only time a fire hydrant would get accepted is if it's like an artistically drawn, like people painted on the fire hydrant. But even then, it's a little sketchy uh, to get fire hydrants to get accepted. I just want to clarify that you can still nominate things on the grounds of emergency services. For example, things in hospitals, as long as they don't obstruct the emergency services, that's the most important part. So like if you're going to nominate, you know, something or some artwork in a hospital, that's fine. I would just avoid nominating anything near entrances or places where there's a lot of traffic and things like that, because you don't want people obstructing the emergency services in case someone needs medical care, so like things like gardens, gazebos, courtyards at hospitals are fine, but don't nominate the ER or, you know, the entrance of the hospital. Finally, liquor stores, shooting ranges, firearms, or places that provide sexual or pornographic content will get declined, guys. Things that are specifically made for adults will get declined. So like, you know, of course, liquor stores, shooting ranges, things that are directed at adults will get declined. There is a scenario where if there's like a mural on a liquor store, it can get accepted as, you know, the place to visit is the mural and not the actual liquor store. And I'll talk about that in a bit, but don't nominate specifically the liquor store, specifically the firearm store, et cetera, et cetera. Finally, I want to talk about memorial benches and like, you know, cemeteries and things like that. If the memorial bench, the memorial plaque, whatever, you know, if you've ever seen those memorial plaques, like in honor of John Smith or whatever, if you've ever seen those, the only way you'll get those accepted, and I'll talk about that in a bit, is if that person has significance in the community. If it's just like in memorial of Johnny Gogo, like let's say that's his name, and all Johnny Gogo was, you know, he's just a guy. He's just a guy. No offense to Johnny Dodo, but he wasn't important and significance in the community. And if there's no proof that he was important in that community, then it will get declined. So only nominate, you know, gravestones, memorial plaques, memorial benches, all that memorial kind of stuff in remembrance of people if that person was important in the community that's the only way you can get those to go through finally directional signs to places so let's say there's like you know a sign saying trampoline place is down the road three miles don't don't nominate that nominate the trampoline jumping place maybe like where you can go you know those big places where you can go jump trampolines or for example like a sign directing you to a church that's like five kilometers away don't nominate that it's just a generic sign nominate the church that's five miles away but no nominate the sign again it goes back to what i said before any generic neighborhood a apartment signs. Okay, so that's a couple of bad nominations, guys. I hope you guys can get your head around what are bad nominations. If you want to review more about bad nominations, you can check out the link below here to rejection criteria on the official Niantic website. Pretty much just tells you uh, reasons why your thing might get rejected. Of course, it talks about actually, you know, your photos and your descriptions and things like that and why it could get nominated because of that, but also on why it's, um, you know, a location that will get rejected. So check out this website. I'll link it below if you want to take a deeper dive on why your Pokestop nomination might have gotten rejected. With that out of the way, let's talk about some good nominations so you guys can get an idea of what things in your area you could go ahead and nominate to get a new Pokestop. Quickly, before I get into some examples of great nominations, I want to talk about where all these nominations stem from, which are the three major criteria for any Pokestop. The Pokestop needs to either be a great place for exploration, a great place to exercise, or a great place to be social with others. All the nominations I'm going to talk about in this video are one or a combination of these three things. So always remember these three criteria when looking for a nomination. And if you can't answer yes to either three of these questions, that is not a good Pokestop or Waystop nomination. First of all, trail markers. Trail markers are usually pretty much all the time going to be generally good. They promote exploration, usually really easy to get through. The most easy nomination to get through is going to be a trail marker. So if there's a trail in your area and there's a trail marker, super easy nomination to get through. Parks, 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 parks. Parks are probably the second best find in your area. If there's a park in your area, it's always going to be a Pokestop at the park. So Things in parks you can nominate, play structures, pools in your parks, swing sets, splash pads, sports fields, basketball courts, tennis courts. Any park amenity that is not grass is generally easy enough to get nominated. Of course, you can't really nominate just benches in your parks. That's way too generic or like garbage cans, but anything that people go to have fun, skating rinks, skate parks, any park is usually a go-to. Of course, remember, you have to remember if it's on private property, it will not go through. So it has to be completely accessible to everyone. Then it's a pretty easy nomination to get through. Now let's talk about apartments. So apartments are not private residential property since it's multi-home area. So you can actually get things in your apartment or around your apartment to get accepted. Things like gazebos, pavilions, 
kids' playgrounds. Of course, if there's play structures in your apartment area, you know those community areas in the apartments, you can get those through. But the only thing I find you cannot get through in apartments, Nantic has stated this, is pools. Apparently, pool apartments are not accessible since it's like you can only go to the pool if you are living at the apartment. I'm not 100% sure. This is kind of a gray area one as I have seen apartments with pool pokey stops, but I don't really know. Apparently, you're not supposed to allow uh, apartment pools to go through. So that's just something to note. Those are generally harder ones to get through. Historical plaques, great nomination as well. Any historical plaque explaining the history of an area is great. Again, can't be on private regional property. Unique art or architecture on the topic of that, murals, cool sculptures, you know, any cool artistic thing that's not on private residential property can get accepted. You'd be surprised on how many things you can get accepted as unique art and architecture. Architecture specifically, if there's like a cool walkway or something like that, you can nominate the walkway. It'll go because it's just look cool. So cool looking. Public libraries, places of worship. So like churches, amazing nomination. Any church in your area should have a poke stop. If it doesn't, get one on there. Zoos are great as well. Great place for exploration and things in zoos as well. So if there's cool things like cool architecture in the zoo, you can get that nominated. Museums and galleries, community gardens, historical gravestones. So again, going back to the gravestones, it has to be historical importance. So if it's like the grave of Abraham Lincoln, you can get a Pokestop on that grave. But if it's the grave of, you know, some random guy in the community, then you won't get a Pokestop on there. So if you see someone that you think is really important in the community or important in history, you can go ahead and nominate their gravestone, their memorial plaque or whatever. Nature signs. So those informational nature signs explaining, you know, about the frogs in this area. Like if you're going on a hike and there's a sign explaining information about the hike or information about the trees, those are great nominations to get to go through. Parks and plazas, of course, on the topic of parks, I'm going to circle back. If you want to nominate a, something at a park, you can nominate the park sign, like the entrance sign. That's a great thing to nominate. Plazas, so areas for people to hang out. If there is an area where there's like a couple benches and a, a nice, it looks like a nice picnic area, you can go ahead and nominate that. That's a nice area for people to be social, hang out, explore and all that stuff. Of course, hiking and biking trails that goes back to the trail markers, the trail head. So any trail head explaining which way you can go on this trail. Amazing. Exercise equipment in public spaces. So if you've ever seen pull up bars or things like that in a park, like that's a fine nomination. That's a park amenity. You can go ahead and nominate those. Sports arenas, sports fields, like I said before, at parks, you know, tennis courts, soccer courts, any sport people play, cricket. I don't even know. Whatever sport you play, if there's a field for that sport, go ahead and nominate it. Post offices. So again, I said you can't nominate mailboxes, but you can nominate post offices. So for example, um, Canada Post is our main one here in Canada. Go ahead and nominate any Canada Post office. Libraries, like I mentioned, but free little libraries. If you see those free little libraries, like those little boxes where you can take a book, change a book, you can go ahead and nominate those, but you have to note they cannot be on private residential property. If there's a little library on someone's like, you know, front porch or like on their lawn, you can't nominate that. It has to be a completely like in a park or in an area where you're not trespassing if you're on that little library. Fountains and water features, those fall under the cool architecture and things like that. So if there's a cool fountain, the fountain needs to be accessible by feet. So if it's a fountain in the middle of a lake, you cannot nominate that. It has to be like you can walk around a kind of fountain. You can take a look and you can put your hands in the water and things like that. I just want to add in here, foot bridges are a great nomination as well. I forgot to mention in the video as well as major transit stations. So major bus stations, like for example, we have one Lincoln Fields bus station here in Ottawa is great nomination, but you cannot nominate a little local bus stop or an individual little bus stop. You need to nominate the actual local major transit station where plenty of buses are coming in. That's a great nomination. And yeah, that's pretty much all of the nominations that you can go ahead and nominate. Of course, there are more that you can nominate and it will depend on your area on what gets accepted. If there are more nominations and things that you have nominated and they have gone through, please let us know below and, and we can fill that list so people can know what they should look for in their area if they're trying to get nominations. I will link another page here explaining the eligibility criteria. This is an official post by Niantic Wayfair on their website in which it gives you a nice long list that we just kind of went through of different things that can get accepted. Sports field, sports arenas, all that stuff. So if you want to take a closer look on the official page of Niantic, come check it out right here. I'll link that below. With that being said, I want to talk about one more category, which is the gray area. Gray area are things that can go through, cannot. It really depends on the reviewer and how many times you try to attempt that to go through. Memorial benches, like I mentioned, are gray area since, you know, you have to be able to prove that that person is important in the community. So when you are nominating your memorial bench, memorial plaque, a gravestone, anything like that, I want you guys to put a lot of supporting links and information in your supporting info on why that is a great nomination and why that person is important in the community. That's the only way you're going to be able to get that one to go through as most of the time it will get declined unless you add that information. Also, historical buildings sometimes can get declined, historical plaques and buildings. Um, so this time you have to, again, in your supporting info, explain why this is important and historical. Usually they're easy to get through those historical 
historical plaques I've heard, but most of the time you do want to add as much supporting info on why that is historically important, like a historical plaque explaining about a historical building. You know, this building was built in 1985 and hosted the queen or something like that. You know, add that info in the supporting. And finally, let's talk about businesses. So businesses, super hard to get through. The only way you can get a business to go through is if you can prove it's a local hotspot. I recently nominated a business. It did get declined. I thought it was a pretty good nomination, but it did end up getting declined. But the key to getting these accepted, and I'm going to try mine again, is to add information on different awards they've gotten in the area, different fundraisers they've done for the area, what kind of food they serve. Why is this unique? Is this the only people who serve this food in the area? All that stuff. I want you guys to add that in supporting info. And then also in the description, maybe say when this store was open, when was the restaurant or whatever local hotspot was open? What kind of food do they serve? It is, if it is a restaurant, what kind of things do they sell? If it's like a local uh, jewelry store or whatever, just add as much info. I will link below a article and this article helped me out a lot about nominating businesses and how to help them to go through because that's the hardest thing to nominate is going to be a business because you have to prove that it is not a generic business and it is a local hotspot where people should visit. Check out the Reddit post below. I think it was on Reddit. Yeah, Reddit post below on nominating businesses and how to help them go through, how to write a good description, good photo and prove that it's not a generic business. With that all being said, guys, I hope that outlined a lot of what is good, what is bad, what is gray area on for you guys to nominate. So if you are a new level 38 or you're just looking for new things to nominate in your area, um, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, I want to say just because you nominate something that was on the good list doesn't mean it's going to instantly go through. You have to have a good photo, a good description, a good title, a good supporting info. So you can check the video link below on how to take those and how to get great supporting photos, uh, great descriptions, all that. You can check the video below. With that being said, guys, hope you guys enjoy this video. Comment below what you're going to be nominating next near you. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Follow for my test, baby. Peace.